Okay, we're live. Hi there, I'm Christopher Clark. Uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, the Amazing Art Expo, uh, doing a Lord of the Rings painting, continuing this piece from yesterday. Um, a lot of you guys tuned in and watched me do the underpainting, and then a lot of this background sky stuff. <coughs> First layer of that, anyway. Uh, this is Minas Tirith Under Siege by the Orc Armies of Mordor. Um, okay, just checking the stream is connected. Yes, chat is up. Okay, cool. And now I will resume. Um, this is a really tough painting. <laughs> Considering uh, the film and some models of the city. It's basically just a big grandiose landscape. Some very detailed stuff. Okay. And it's funny when my phone notifies me that I'm streaming. <laughs> okay. Where was I left off? I had done these mountains. I was going to connect them to the clouds up here. I'll probably maybe later do a little extra layer of color on these clouds to tone back some of the color. It's a little harsh. Um, hi, Rebecca. How's it going? You get to, <laughs> you're, you're probably waiting by your computer, you know, counting down the minutes. Okay, where did I leave off here? I guess I could start working on the city. Everything's connected, so it's hard to like separate which parts to do and which parts to leave for later. Let's do the city, why not? This is going to be one of the more challenging parts because it's very specific and it's very detailed. I do have some references of some models. But they're from different angles and different lighting, and I've got to just sort of invent and put it all together and make it work right. Okay, Jason Buckley, love your art. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Okay. The city is mainly going to be this dark silhouette with some rim light coming off of it. I'm going to exaggerate the light, turn it a little more this way. Because otherwise it's going to be all shadow. I know the light is way in the distance, but I'm for the city. I'm going to make the, the pretend the light is a little bit coming from a little more forward, just so I can um, see more of it. Otherwise, it's all this dark silhouette. It's kind of lame. Where was I? Let's uh, let's continue these clouds over here. Sort of this grayish purple. Okay. Thank you guys all for watching. Uh, incidentally, uh, you can order, you can pre order prints of this piece. Um, you can go to ChristopherClarkArt.com or there should be a, a link right on the streaming service you're watching to pre-order prints of this piece. The original is sold already. Um, it's actually a commission anyway. That's how that worked out. Um, but you can get a print of it. It's pretty cool. So yeah, click on the <coughs> click on that link uh, that on the streaming service you're watching. Right, we're gonna just connect those mountains together. Mountains and the clouds end up connecting. So this is decently dry from yesterday. This medium I add helps a lot. I 
Uh, and then please follow us on whatever streaming service you're watching if you'd uh, uh, like to see more of these videos. Um, I'll be, I've been basically streaming almost everything I've been painting at uh, home. Um, and for the next, uh, through this weekend, um, and then next weekend and the weekend of that, I'm doing uh, Lord of the Rings series, basically. Um, so yeah, please follow us if you'd like to, to watch all those. Those will be really fun. some mountainous stuff happening here and then that will be a little darker as it yeah there's this sort of the main house thing the main hall up there and then there's this sort of bridge that goes back here these other structures the, the tombs and such. All right, let's make this put a little tiny bit of a silhouette, or rather a, a lighted plain version of this color. So I can hit some of these. There we go. Just showing some mountainous, mountainy thingies. The texture of my surface really helps make this look really rocky and stuff. I'm always a big believer of letting this, the texture and the paint do a lot of the work for you because they can do things that I can't do or, you know, take me too long to do with paint, but let the texture just sort of happen and it looks great. Hi there, Bull. Uh, great sky in the back. Thank you. Um, yeah, this was I uh, did did this yesterday after doing the underpainting. So this is all the unfinished part that has a, this, this was just underpainting. Um, and then you know a lot of this looked very similar to this. And I added this in oil paint yesterday. This is like the dawn, as we're gonna see the Rohirrim on the little ridge right here. And then the armies of Mordor will be out in front here, encircling the city Minas Tirith. Um, so yeah, this was a great dramatic, very, you know, Frank Frazetta kind of <laughs> adventure-y looking sky. Um, which I can, I, I might actually still go over and put a little bit of touches of some washes over to soften some of these colors. They're a little intense. Okay, now city. I have had this. This is my lighter one. Oh, sorry. A little, little sleepy still. Um, maybe a little more green. I've got these purples underneath, which are great. But that's going to be more just the under color. And it can't be too dark because it needs to look like it's far away. Far away. But I need to be able to see that edge. I'm going to have to sort of invent a lot of this because I don't have a great reference for it. So I'm just going to treat it like I might do a European cityscape or something. That's kind of what this looks like to me. Rosetta was a paint god. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I don't know if I'm anywhere near the Frazetta level or will be for a very long time, but uh, that would be pretty great. I do study his work. I do study everyone's work. I study all the time. In fact, I just, you know, just yesterday signed up for a six-week facial anatomy intensive course with uh, Scott Eaton, very well known uh, uh, anatomy educator, because my education is never done. I'm always studying.
to where I spend half of my money from selling prints and paintings is on further education so that I can be hopefully really really good at this I think I'm pretty good uh, I think I still have a lot to learn I know where I know where my weak points are but uh, I think I'm happy to say that I've been comfortable in coming up with my own style and my own sort of way of painting and my own sort of thing. Here's that bridge. I think this will be really great. I, this will definitely be one of the ones where I have to let it dry and come over it with some real subtle atmosphere -y things that I can't do yet. It needs to dry. Okay. And since this is oil paint, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm adding mediums to help it go a little faster drying. But sometimes it does just take time. Here's all the tombs back here. These have a word. I can't remember what they call them in the books. I'm failing all the nerds right now by not knowing what those are called. Hello from France. Uh, Wilfred Gobert. Um, Bienvenue de France, Wilfred. Um, merci pour voir mon du peintre aujourd'hui. Um, ainsi que vous pouvez voir, je suis en train de en prendre le français. Et je, um, désolé si je parle comme en vache espagnol, <laughs> mais je, par, je pratique tous les jours. Um, je suis en train maintenant de lire les séries de Harry Potter en entière. Uh, je suis sur le quatrième lèvre, livre. C'est très belle et très difficile, mais um, it, uh, what's the verb? C'est un, uh, un peu plus facile uh, chaque jour que je pratique. Le problème de moi euh, est ce que je ne je n'ai pas personne avec qui je puisse euh, je puisse pratiquer pratique euh, parler en français. Seulement, euh, je lis les livres tous les jours, mais je n'ai pas personne avec qui je puisse pratique euh, parler et écouter. C'est très, très difficile, mais c'est joli, c'est très joli, c'est très, très, très belle. Um, J'ai visité au Paris uh, l'été dernier avec des amis. Um, on a visité uh, Paris pour uh, en du chemin et puis uh, la ville petite de Anussi. Et puis euh, les villes de, de Tours avec tous les châteaux. C'est en vacances très belles. Et voilà parce que euh, euh, j'ai commencé à apprendre le français encore une fois. So, J'ai été fait mes études de français depuis plus ou moins un an, un an et, un an et demi. <rire> C'est un rêve de moi de <rire> un jour habiter en France. France ou Italie. Euh, euh, je parle italien, mais... Pour le dernier an, euh, 
j'ai fait mes études de français. L'œuvre est à visiter. Pour ces jolies pattes, oui. Euh, j'ai visité les Louvre et ainsi le musée d'Orsay et le musée de euh, Orangerie euh, et le musée de Rodin. Wow! Très belle. Quelle, à quelle ville euh, est-ce que vous habitiez, Wilfred? À euh, quelle ville? Au Paris, au Lyon, au... où? Yeah, a little bit lighter there. I like the purple. I don't want to lose all of that. That's further away, right? So I'm setting this up. It's basically a silhouette with some highlights on it. This is further away. Yeah, the further away it gets has to be a little like lighter almost. J'habite le nord de France à Boulogne sur mer. Wow. Je n'ai jamais visité le, le nord de France, seulement um, Paris est, euh, est très très sûr à la, la ville de euh, Antibes, mais jamais à le nord. 50 km de Angleterre, très bien. <rire> Est-ce que vous pourrez prendre un um, um, boat, fuck, um, un vaisseau, ou le channel? On verra en 2h30 minutes de Paris. Belle. Boulogne. Je ne connais pas. Ok. Oui, le bateau. Boulogne, est-ce qu'on une ville que je dois visiter? Vous me, vous, vous me recommandez, oui? You guys are like, what are they talking about? Quit talking behind her back, right in front of us, jerk. I'm practicing my French. <laughs> I never get to. That's what I was explaining to Wilfred. Le tunnel qui passe par Calais. Oh, um, oh, sorry, you're speaking English now. One, <laughs> this is someone else. I'm like, oh, no, the thing, uh, one of the things, <laughs> use of colors to show an emotion. Uh, your abstract style is not exactly detailed, but conveys the main subject. Yeah, um, that's my point exactly. I love being a little more abstract with the details and not necessarily showing everything. I think showing every detail, honestly, is pretty is a little boring. Makes the painting look kind of stiff, in my opinion. Um, I think when you can leave some up to the imagination, uh, number one, I think it looks more exciting when not all the painting is completely spelled out um, and some of it's mysterious and left in, in the, the shadows and the abstractions. But then also, I think, um, uh, it makes the painting have a movement to it. It feels alive and moving. When you paint every single detail, it just sharpens and just makes everything stop and stand still. You, you have to leave some room, you know, that's what brushwork does, brushwork. Yeah, that makes the painting look alive and moving like it's a 
like you're watching it happen right now, or if I paint every single blade of grass, it's just like a completely stopped, stiff, still moment. And everything looks contrived and, and uh, posed. And But um, it's actually, speaking of Frazetta, I was comparing, um, what's his name? Um, <laughs> really, that's hilarious. <laughs> and now it's for tourism. <laughs> that's great. And maintenant, c'est un bon moyen de voyage vers les Angleterre et la France. <laughs> Um, C'était une ville qu'affectionnait l'empereur Napoléon. Okay, I should check it out. Je dois visiter. Merci pour la recommandation. Um, but uh, what's the guy's name? Boris. I just looked him up the other day. Uh, you know, the other fantasy painter. Um, uh, I have to say, I don't love his work as much because it is very, to me, feels very stiff and too detailed and shiny and perfect. And Frazetta's was just loose enough to have more of a life. Um. <clears throat> Hi, Luke, how's it going? Uh, yeah, I have to say, oh, battery before my pewter dies. Oh, that would suck. I hate that when that happens. There we go. Um, Boris Vallejo, thank you. Yeah, I have to say I don't love Boris Vallejo's work. It's very skilled. It's very, uh, you know, very well done. But to me, it's a little stiff. It's like, here's a picture of a model that I hired for this thing. He's like, oh, doing this very specific pose. And he's like, you know, not really interacting and not really blending with the environment. And there's all these crazy detailed stuff that's very beautiful, but it just seems a little disjointed to me. Uh, I think Frazetta had a way of uh, uh, melding it all together perfectly so that it just fit and it was alive and moving and it wasn't too crisp, you know. I think it helped that uh, in his definitely in his later years he didn't need a model anymore he could just do everything from memory so by nature everything was designed perfectly fit for that scene right then and there rather than Boris I could tell he's using mo photographs of models um, that he posed for this piece and it looks very like here hold this pose oh, with a sword and pretend you're riding a dragon you know that's what it looks like to me it's very well painted and he's very skilled but it looks very contrived and stiff in my opinion so I think too many details can uh, you know make a painting not as convincing okay so many things to do right now here I was going to try to lift some of these levels a little bit just make them a little taller maybe Let's say, right, let's get some smaller brushes out. Let's do some planes of some of these structures and stuff. Yeah, some of these can be like a little ring. Okay, this is really hard. Let's do Mixing some colors. This is the lit sort of plain stuff happening here. But it's on the shadow. <clears throat> okay. It's going to be lightest around. That'll probably be a little bit of an extra shadow. It might be catching a little light there. That could be a little more, maybe a green. Maybe the 
I'm just going to invent a lot of this stuff because there's sort of varying versions of all this stuff. Let's make that a little taller. There's a... This could be a tower here. say this is going to be the apex of light here. Here there's nothing blocking it so it can be anywhere. And there are Yeah, we'll just start making towers. This is a lit plane. Say there's another one here. Let's make this a little thinner so I can smush it around a little easier. Sometimes there's just wall. I want it to get darker in toward the, the center. And it has to wrap around and be a circle. So try this. Yeah, each one is a little darker on the bottom of it. That's a better tool. behind the previous level. I need this to be a dark here. building a city right now. Not on rock and roll, unfortunately. Tu fais un sucre sur sous le bois. C'est un tableau de bois que je fais. Je fais moi-même. He asked what uh, what sort of support am I painting on? It's uh, I paint on wood panel uh, that I build myself. I don't really care for canvas. It's too wobbly. It's like painting on a trampoline. Um, and I like uh, the, the 
rigid surface of wood panel and I like that I can it holds texture the way that I want it. Um, I guess sometimes there should be some darks down here to really separate those levels. There we go. And I'm looking over at the feed to see what it looks like. It's hard because it's a little skewed because of the camera angle. Um, but uh, just helps me see the values a little better. Let's mix that color again. That's a good one. A little bit of that. A little bit of that. A lot more of that. Oxide red is so strong. There's some colors that, man, you just look at them wrong and they tint your whole mixture. And let's try to keep some of this paint thicker. Give me some, some, some body. It's a little, it's a little light. Big old tower right here, maybe. This is about horizon. some of those into here a little bit of dark to make a shadow behind the next level and then it gets much darker back here as it wraps around and you can make a big tall one right here I wanted to raise the height of some of these levels anyway Rebecca, you're typing in Japanese. Um, Nihongo skoshi anashimasu. So I'm afraid I can't have a conversation with you. My current foreign language in my brain is French. Um, I was pretty almost fluent in Italian at one point, but I'm very rusty. But I could make the attempt if somebody jumped on and was speaking Italian.
mais maintenant les langues dans mon cerveau, à part du anglais et les français. You say you spoke some back in the day. <laughs> um, oh, do you speak uh, Japanese or are you just like Google translating it? Um, I, you know, I've been to Japan a couple times and I've learned a little bit whenever I go over there, but it's very minimal and I forget it mostly <laughs> when I come back. You're quite rusty in Japanese now, but you're pretty good. Yeah, it's um, languages, if you don't keep up on them, you'll lose them for sure. You get out of practice, you get out of shape, you know. Um, my longest traveling stint, I was in Italy for four months. Jesus, like seven years ago. Um, and when I came back, I was like, I'd say 80% fluent. I could have full conversations for hours with people. Um, I could make jokes. You know, I could, I could just, you know, talk casually and it was totally fine. I was thinking in Italian. I was dreaming in Italian. There was a, a phrase or two here and there where I didn't understand. Um, people thought I was Italian. Um, it would be, that's what would usually betray me was when I would say, what was that? And I'd be like, what? I'm, I'm like, I didn't, what was that? What you just said? I didn't understand what that what a word meant or something. And they're like, where are you from? <laughs> I'm like, uh, United States? Like, no way. Veramente solo degli Stati Uniti. Ma famiglia vengono dall'Italia Sud. È un paesino si chiama Campobasso. Ne sono cresciuto io degli Stati Uniti. E California Sur. So, people had a very hard time believing that I wasn't Italian. They thought if I said something funny, maybe I just had a weird accent from another part of the, the country. <laughs> because there's dialects everywhere. I'm like, no, really, I'm from America. I almost got arrested by some cops once because I was walking around a town taking pictures and stuff and I had a I had a red backpack that I was carrying my stuff in and apparently they had gotten calls about some jackass breaking car windows and stuff who had a red backpack on. So they saw me walk around taking pictures. I don't know if that looked suspicious. And they stopped me and talked to me for a while. Um, and of course, I'm speaking Italian to them because they're police and I'm just trying to be really nice. And they're like, you know, where are you from? I'm like, I'm, I'm living with my friend at the other end of town, but I'm originally from the United States. They're like, no way. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, I'm from the United States. I'm, uh, you know, I had my Italian passport on me, which I have. So they're like, uh, you know, and I didn't, I didn't have my American passport, it was back at the apartment. So it's like, okay, that looks, you know, you're from America, bullshit. So I like, prove it. I'm like, all right. So I started speaking fluent English. I'm like, I'm from here, I'm you know, visiting. What? They're like, okay. And I could walk down the street incognito and I would get stopped by tourists asking for directions in English. And I just wouldn't. I would just pretend I'm Italian. And I would, I would pretend I spoke very poor English. It was pretty funny. I enjoyed that a lot. Merci pour cette demonstration. Et encore bravo pour votre excellent accent français. À la prochaine. Bonsoir. Il est. Um, 20 UMD. 
Wow. Um, merci, Wilfred, pour uh, voir. Um, J'espère que tu vois encore une fois la prochaine fois que je fais une vidéo uh, de mon peintre. Um, uh, pour suivre nous sur, uh, sur l'internet. Sur... Where are you watching from? Um, Facebook. Uh, pour suivre moi sur Facebook. Um, et vous pouvez voir encore une fois, la prochaine fois. Um, si je ne finis pas cette uh, tableau aujourd'hui, uh, je continue demain. Demain à l'11, uh, uh, à 11 du matin. Oui. Uh, 11 de l'après-midi. Um, demain. Et encore, uh, la semaine, le, le week-end prochain, j'ai fait un autre tableau de Lord, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, I don't know how to... <laughs> it sounds funny to say that with a French accent. Um, Le Seigneur du... How do you say ring? I actually don't know that word. Um, but, uh, oui, merci pour voir et j'espère que uh, nous nous um, retrouverons encore une fois la prochaine fois. So, bonne nuit. <laughs> What is the red rectangle you're pulling off the paint? Uh, it's a it's a piece of rubber. It's it's not even a tool. It's a tool that I made. I make a lot of my own tools um, because it does things that no tool that I could buy does, and it makes a certain mark that I like. So I've been painting with uh, various sort of things that I make myself for many years. Uh, I have aspirations of sort of making an official tool version out of it and, and you know, selling them someday. That would be nice. If they, you know, got picked up by a... by a tool, like a art supply company or something. And I'm adding paint with it. I'm not taking it off. Okay, this thing is starting to look more like a castle. Oh yeah, I can see in the in the feed there. It's starting to look better. This just takes a lot of patience and I just can't haphazardly put down paint. I have to like think about every little crevice and every little facet of this city. Maybe there's a big one right there. And I have to add some highlights to these later to really show going on there. Big old tall towers. this up a little bit. I still have to maintain my, oops, my ellipses in perspective here. It's challenging. It's too red.
good. On Shark Tank, right? <laughs> well, I think it has to be a little more developed than what I've done. How many units have you sold? Uh, none. I made one for myself. Concept the drawing first before starting. Uh, yeah, there's on um, on the website where you can buy a print. Um, the, it should have the uh, the charcoal drawing that I did as a concept for this piece. Uh, which incidentally, you can buy prints of this piece um, before it's finished. The original is sold since this is a commission, um, but there are prints available. Uh, there should be a link on whatever your platform you're watching. Uh, to buy prints um, and uh, yeah so check that out uh, oh, we're also duh I keep forgetting we're having a 25% off sale on the prints of, of all Lord of the Rings prints so I've done this is my eighth Lord of the Rings piece I've done so please check out the website um, there should be a link there uh, and also you can go just to ChristopherClarkArt.com is where all my prints are. But yeah, all Lord of the Rings prints are 25% off. So hopefully you can pick up this piece or any of the other cool pieces that I've done. Here is the, uh, the link. Thanks, Nick. Um. <clears throat> <coughs> and then also, um, if you like these videos, you, you can follow us so you can see more of these. And then also, we, uh, if you want to support us on Patreon, that would be super helpful as well. Um, we do have a Patreon page for our new gallery project we're starting called uh, Amazing Art Expo. Uh, there should be a, a link for that as well. Um, on your, your whatever streaming platform you're watching on. Um, so for as little as a dollar a month, you can support our gallery. Um, so we can continue to bring you cool videos like this. And also, um, we have cool rewards for... For the higher up, uh, the higher you go uh, for your monthly subscription, the more rewards that you get. So please check that out. There should be a link on your streaming video service there too. And Nick will probably post it on there. He just did. So please check out our Patreon page. Um, you, have, you have things like discounts on our website for buying prints and originals. Um, you get access to these videos indefinitely when the general public only gets to watch them live. They don't get to watch the archived versions. So for, for most people, they're watching this video, and then that's it. They don't get to see it anymore. But as a patron, you get to see it forever. So that's kind of cool. And <clears throat> um, you have uh, there's a level where you can have access to a lot of my original concept sketches. For a lot of the pieces that I do, uh, and then you get uh, there's one I think there you get first rights of refusal on uh, on originals, uh, which is pretty powerful if you're a collector. So yeah, we have a lot of cool rewards, not just like oh the warm feeling in your heart you get for like no we actually have stuff that we're trying to offer you. For, for you know saying thanks for your support because what we do is very hard and it's very expensive and um, we appreciate your supporting us and then also it'll, it'll help us get uh, back on the road so we can start traveling again and uh, hopefully come to your town I have to say that would be very incentivizing for us to come to a town that has we have a ton of patrons from so please check out our Patreon page at uh, 
It's patreon.com slash amazingartexpo if you need the actual site. And please support us there. And of course, in general, just follow us on your streaming service that you're watching so you can see. Um, mainly it's been me doing all the videos. I should say it's only been me, but we do have aspirations of bringing, we have other artists we work with and we want them to do videos too. So it's not just gonna be me forever. But in general, it is mostly me doing this. <laughs> That's all right, though. It is very hard doing this, though. Like turning my painting time into a performance, basically. Uh, so what platforms are you streaming on? Twitch, YouTube, Facebook? Um, Instagram is, is tough because, uh, they only let you do, um, uh, one hours at one hour at a time. You can post longer videos later. Actually, no, I take it back. No, you can only do one hour videos period. Uh, and you know, I'm streaming for the whole day. Uh, and also, uh, I can only stream from my phone, so I can't stream from my computer, which means it has to be a totally separate feed from everything else. It's, a, it's just a lot cha more challenging to stream to Instagram. I do when I can. It's hard because then I have two things to me. I've got to look back at the phone and look at that. And I get, oh, the timer runs out. i got a chance. It's really a pain in the ass. Um, so we do stream to Instagram, but not, um, not as often and not as much. You have all the pages open, yeah. Um, yeah, some people are commenting and watching. I have the 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 chat all filtering. It's all funneling all the comments into one window so I can see them all. But yeah, some people are on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, um, Picardo, and Periscope. That's the one. A lot of different platforms going on here. Okay, oh man, I can do the tower sort of thing up here. What does that look like? This, uh, let's say it's kind of a fun. There's like a hall, maybe there's like different towers up here. Let's say this thing can be more a little more to the right. Maybe a little taller. Yeah, this can be like these towers going like that. around the back um, and then let's say here's this little bridge with all kinds of fun stuff happening up here I do you have a brush for this yeah There's a bridge that goes across there. And there's all kinds of little guys. Maybe there's a long one here with like a roof.
Maybe there's another roof there. I'm kind of doing this like I'm like a little, um, like a little European facade of buildings or something in, in France or in Italy, which I have been painting a lot of lately. Very helpful. Do a couple shadows here. Let's say this. I just need sort of indications of architectural details in here. And I can add some little highlights in here as necessary. That's going to be lit by the actual light. And let's say each one of these can have a little window in it or something. So now I'm getting into a little more finer detail for some of these parts. There could be some sort of holdovers there. We built this city. We built this city on a rock and we built it. Yeah. Show a little sort of stone work as it comes out of this sort of big splice of a mountain here. This is where I get to show a little rim light, though, which will be nice. All right, let me stop and take a break for a second. Just stand up and stretch a little bit. It's been an hour. Jeez. things down in here too. That's a little too dark. Oof. That has been an hour already. <laughs> Jefferson Starship. Right? Show some crevices in the rock here. Because this is a mountain. The montagna. And this sort of showing some shadow behind where the city sort of ends. This would be a great place to explore, man. I can imagine actually like living in a place like this. How many secret passages there must be, and it's like a city. Yeah, 
Here we go. Throw it right into the rock. This is my dark. Um, I can make these a little darker as well. Definitely back here. Okay, this is why I'm pretty sure I'm still going to need tomorrow for this piece. Although tomorrow I was hoping to join some friends in the afternoon, like four-ish. So, we'll see how far I get. Just adding some shadows behind each level there. It's a little more clear. And then I have the wall, which I haven't done yet. Where is it going to start to get some light is maybe like, <coughs> like here. There's like a tower every once in a while. There's how many stairs are in this place. Everyone who lives in this city just must have bonds of steel. Walking up and down a bajillion stairs every day. Bones o steel. I once stayed at this uh, hotel in Greece, in Santorini, which is beautiful. The island that, that was blown up by a volcano a couple times, um, and uh, that the whole island is just down to the size of a the cliff so you're constantly going up and down stairs and man those things just kick your ass after you do a couple hundred just to go down to your room and come back up to go to the town and and the people who work there carry your bags for you and they just come up and down and they're like yeah it's hard at first but you get better at it <laughs> wow This is the last bottom wall. <laughs> Fortify with Vino, right? Uh, unfortunately, that makes me slow down a little bit. I'm such a freaking lightweight, it puts me right to sleep. For dinner, sure, but I'm not going back to work after I've had a couple glasses of Vino. Definitely not. And here's where this is just going to sort of disappear. I didn't want the tangent right by the, the edge of the painting. And then here's like the main gate. Probably there. That's where we're also going to start to see some light. Um which means we are going to see that thing still divides the town there but this is going to get warmer because it's going to be getting hit with some reflected light So my shadow is going to become more, I want to say orange, pink. Add a little, let's add a little pink. 
a little lighter and a little more red. Just a little bit to start with. I could have used a little more of that and I could thin it out a little bit too. And it should be a little more red. There we go. That's better. Hey, Kafir, how's it going, man? You've done Lord of the Rings maps before, yeah? Middle Earth map, I can I can imagine. Kafir does some sweet um, works on leather. He does uh, original paintings and sort of carvings, sculpture on leather. Uh, a lot of maps from a lot of different fandoms, but then also, uh, um, you know, illustrative works as well. I met him through the Incredible Art Gallery. He did a show there once with us a couple years ago. That was fun. Yeah, here's where we're going to start to see some light. I don't want to cover this too much. I might have to come back and forth in this spot to really get it. Here, I can use this shadow now here. Yeah, this will start to really look great when I put the light on it. Until then, it's like a you know dark blobs. I'm like, oh well. But that that's pretty typical. When I do a piece, it starts to really shine when I can finally add some proper light. But you have to have good shadows before you can add good light. Here's the wall. Let's say that's that. This is a Okay, this could be a little taller. People say I paint fast. I have no idea what they're talking about. This is just taking forever. Like every inch is just like an agony of concentration. It's really amazing that I can do these streams and talk to people while I'm doing this. This is why I'm not staring at the comments like answering every single one because I'm like, this is hard. I could use this. This could be like a transitional color. Okay. Make sure I got my circle, my ellipse properly done. Because it's all for nothing if the freaking drawing is wrong. Could bring that in a little bit. 
Minas Tirith, City of Kings. Here dwells Denethor, son of Ecathelion, lord and steward of Gondor. That was my Gandalf impression. Somewhere Ian McKellen just put his head in his hands and he doesn't, doesn't really know why. guard towers everywhere. I need to have proper shadows behind them. And then these shadows change color as they get closer to the lit side here. I should probably take a picture of this. I haven't taken a picture in a while. I haven't taken a picture today, actually, so that'd be a good idea. This is in shadow back here, but there are still some towers here and there. And there's going to be smoke and shit coming out of this thing eventually, because a lot of it's on fire. Fire! Thankfully, I've got another massage scheduled on Tuesday. Oh, because this just kills my shoulders. Just sit here in a chair and hold your arm out in front of you for eight hours. Let's see how you feel. Hi, Pud. <laughs> Ambo's watching. All right. What's up, Fizz? How's it going, man? Uh, you guys don't usually tune in with Ricky does, but... Amber, you want a break at work or something? So we still, we doing sushi tonight or what? I guess I had to ride my bike over there when I'm down here. Since you have le coche. Okay, that's looking good. Ooh. Okay, uh, I guess I could start doing some highlights now. That would be fun. Kate and I are having lunch. Oh, hi, Kate, too. Um, yeah, we should do sushi later. Um, see if Kate wants to go. Oh, and her friend. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, I'll be finishing up here at latest 6, because that's what we're scheduled. And so I can be at the shop by 6.15 or 6.20. It's supposed to stop raining by, you know, at the latest 4 or 5, so we'll be fine. I'll be fine. Rain doesn't bother me. A brave man likes the feel of the rain nature on his face. And a wise man has enough sense of getting in out of the rain. <laughs> Who can tell me what that what that's from? Any 
everybody. I'll say it again. It's two people talking. A brave man likes the feel of nature on his face, and a wise man has enough sense getting in out of the rain. Let you mull that one over. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Tell Corey that one. He'll know it in a second. <clears throat> okay. Now. Yeah, I want to keep this purple because I like the different color. But I suppose I could make it a little, it's a little too purple. I want to make it a little more blue. It's a, it's rock versus the city, which is like, you know, this white stone. But it's a little too purpley right now. Let's. Can cover it a little bit. And honestly, this painting is complicated enough. I might have to go in here after a few days and add some washes of color and touch-ups to unify some things. <coughs> okay, now, all right, let's do that. I keep talking about it. Let's go for some highlights here. We'll start with the lightest lights. And I can add a transitional color later. So this is a, I'm going to say it's going to be like a yellowish, yellowish green. A little touch of orange to dull it down a little bit. because it's a white grayish stone. He's designing now, but I'll ask him. <laughs> okay, we're gonna say the light's coming from maybe like there, not there, just so I can have a little more light on the city. How light. A little lighter, I think. I want just a little more exaggerated. See the light's really gonna so you can see it already. It's gonna make the glow happen. It'll give a lot of dimension to the city too. Look at that. Hi, Joey. Uh, you're an artist too. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for watching, man. It's a tough business, but it's very fulfilling. It's what I wanted to do my whole life. my tendency to make all my vertical lines crooked Ugh. happens all the time we just got a new patron apparently I just got that word so thank you so much whoever that was it's uh, very helpful for supporting the gallery so thank you very much um, incidentally if you happen to check out our patreon page uh, I designed all the fun little icons that show the different levels of patrons. Um, 
uh, I actually hand drew those in pen and ink. So just a fun little fact if you happen to go check that out. So yes, please check out our Patreon. It is uh, There should be a link on uh, whatever service you're watching. It's uh, Amazing Art Expo is the name of our new gallery project we're starting. Jack Burton. Somebody got it. It's from uh, it's from Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> I'm a pretty reasonable man, but I've just seen some very unreasonable things. You just remember what the old Pork Chop Express says when it... What does he say? Um... When someone taps the back of your favorite head up against a ballroom wall and says, Have you paid your dues, Jack? Yep. Yes, sir. The check is in the mail. Very good. Rebecca wins that one. You just listen to the old Pork Chop Express. When the rain is falling and shits sheets thick as lead. When the pillars of heaven shake. Cool watching the painting come to life. Uh, thanks, Kira. Thanks for watching. Um, I think it's cool as well. And I'm doing it. Okay, I think then I need to start fading to a transitional color here. Which might be a little more... Let's save this brush. Because this is what's going to, it's too flat right now, it needs another color. Um, might be orange in some places, but not too much. We can do a good combo, orange and some green, and a little bit of red. It just needs to be a little darker. Oops. I need to add the shadows back in there. A little darker, a little more colorful. But I don't want this to be a rainbow. Because this is a gray stone.
So I'm gonna need little subtleties here. Here's another wall starting to starting to darken up a little bit as it's turning. Here's uh, where are the doors over there somewhere. I don't care. I'll do that later. That's going to be an extra shadow there because of that blade part of the city, so we'll leave that for later. I'll say that's where the light starts right there. I want there to be an extra shadow because of this thing here. There's a nice tower there. darker and then there's a tower there. Okay now it's starting to look a little more rounded. Maybe go a little more color because it's blending in with that. becomes the highlight now becomes the midtone. Okay, let's say this is here now. Nice big one right there, a tower. A little bit of wall that's adjoining. Just a few highlights as it turns the corner. slowly coming together. Let's do a little more up here. I haven't done this part of the building yet. Uh, I need the old stick. Let's lower this one notch so I can get in here. This is a little taller than the horizon, so I gotta adjust my perspective.
Look at that. It's like a little city all of a sudden. Um, I could do a little something here. It's catching some light up there. And then it'll hit shadow back there. And then against the front of this rock. Maybe a little different color. Make sure I get that as a straight line, son of a bitch. That's okay, it's a little jagged because it's stone. Transitional color. Well, that's looking good. Oh, I want to scroll down and show me the new messages. There we go. You've been buying a large canvas print for the if you're entryway. Awesome. Well, thank you all. Appreciate it. So they're not all the same. A couple different heights here and there. Okay, this is looking good. And this is hard to tell until I do it for a while and step back and go, oh, oh, good. <laughs> and sometimes when someone gives me a comment on a painting, like, oh, it looks great. I'm like, does it? I have no idea. <laughs> really don't. I'm hoping. But it's so hard to tell first. <coughs> All right, I could do a great transitional color here. For this rock, this could be a great sort of a purpley, a little too much. Sort of a purpley orange. Definitely have very romanticized colors in this piece, but I think that's fun. Instead of just like gray, you know, a lot of this would be just gray if I were to do it very accurately, but I think it's more interesting to do it this way. Oh yeah, you get a discount code. Uh, the Lord of the Rings stuff should be discounted, but there's still the code though. <coughs> if, you, if you get some other titles too. Okay, let's stop again real quick, just so I can stand up. And let's look at this from over here. perspective. Yeah, I'm noticing that ellipse needs to be adjusted a little bit. Oh, that's looking really good. And of course, I'm glad I stood up and looked because this is funky right here.
Where are the two light brushes I was just using? Did I put those back? <laughs> Yeah, I think I turned that into a different color. This is too high. Got a message about another commission I'm working on. So many commissions. It's great. Let's push this down a little bit now too. Yeah, that's a little tall. Just have to make sure the perspective is accurate. Damn ellipses. And there's going to be a bunch of orcs there anyway, so, you know, I can fudge that more later. Yeah, I can see that's still too tall there. Soften up some of these. A friend of mine is a mega Lord of the Rings fan. I wonder why she's not watching. Maybe she doesn't know about this right now. I should tell her. neck rest for a quick second. I guess I could come in there and add some little windows and things. And then it'll probably have been about two hours at that point. And oh, it's not even done. Oh, good. Uh, well, awesome, Bull. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks, man. You're, of course, you know, we have the discount just to try to incentivize people to buy some stuff. But uh, we definitely appreciate your extra support then. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, little tiny windows. Time for little tiny brushes. <clears throat> little tiny windows and little tiny highlights. All right, I'm gonna move this up a little bit again, just so it's in front of me. That's still good for you guys, yeah. Uh, oh, let's take a picture, just because I'm gonna forget at some point, I know that. Uh, this is another benefit of our Patreon is that you get access to these beautiful images of this, the, the progress photos of the painting. Rather than watching it, you know, only from the skewed angle of the camera, um, you know, it's just cool to watch it live, but then you can study the images later, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. Okay, little tiny windows. 
Where's my stick? Why doesn't this show me new messages? Uh, oh, time loss videos too. Yeah, um, Luke is a patron. He actually he was our first patron, so take his word for it. They're very cool. We try to we try to offer cool stuff to really make it worth your while. And it's really windy outside. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, this is like a little Italian cityscape. Wow, it's really windy outside. And these still have to conform to my ellipses in perspective. This means these can be a little wider, that will help that. You guys probably can't see this close, and I don't want to adjust the camera because it was hard to get it back far enough to see. The whole painting. staircase little staircases here and there it's like I'm designing my own city Some of these a little wider as they come pointing at us. Staircase, staircase there. Why not? Just for funsies. Because you know the little the little Gondorians need to run around. What are, what are they called? Gondorites. They're Gondorish. What's their like official term for their people? Gondorians. That sounds pretty terrible, so I'm gonna stick with that one. You are men of Gondor! You will stand your ground! To the walls! Fight! I heard rumor that they were trying to build a, a life-size version of Minas Tirith as an actual city that people could like buy property and live in and stuff. That would be awesome. I would totally live there. It was going to cost... Oh, yeah, that's right. Somebody started a Kickstarter and it was going to cost like a few billion pounds. Uh, he was a guy in UK. Uh, and he actually raised a couple million on Kickstarter, but he had to give it all back because he didn't meet his goal. Um, <laughs> throw these creatures into the abyss! And they throw a couple rocks at him. Like, really, Gandalf? That's, that's how you throw them back into the abyss? 
You, th you catapult a few rocks. They couldn't come up with any cooler, like, weapons, like exploding things or magical laser beams or something. Why couldn't he shoot laser beams from his, from his staff like he did at the Nazgul when he rode out into the field? I feel like Gandalf's magic was a lot more strategic insight than it was, like, fireballs and things. Although in the books it says he specialized in incendiary techniques, but he never used that in the movies. Don't know why. Could have been hucking burning pine cones from the top of the walls here and taking out all these orcs, but he never does. He does it in The Hobbit all the time. And he even they mentioned specifically how he specializes in that kind of magic. He never uses it in the movies. He hits him with a stick. She hits him with his staff. He fights like a person does. I'm like, come on, Gandalf. He has these, like, in The Hobbit, even he in the book, he has these, like, little bombs. He, like, throws them and blows up a bunch of goblins and stuff. He never does that in any of the movies. He fights with a sword and his staff. And he, like, you know, hits him over the head with it. And he's, like, very, like, acrobatic in his sword fighting for an old man. Like, just... Shoot a laser beam at him from your from your magic staff. It's kind of funny. I could do a couple like doorways too. That's what I need here. They're all the, I need some variations and some of these shapes. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a doorway there. Hoping the rest of this painting will go a little faster. Because, God, this is like taking forever. It's going to be a million little orcs on the field. Most of them will be just little dots, though, so that's okay. They're so small. Tiny little orcs. Little orcs. They doesn't taste very nice, does they, Precious? Not very nice at all. some larger sort of window things here right now and then. Hmm. All right, let's look at this. Could do some really great oranges in a couple spots here. I really could use some. There could be a couple of really zingers too. That's what I need. A couple of zingy highlights there. It's also why I can't, it's hard to move the camera because then I can't sit here and focus. So the camera's like right here. I'm like banding around it like sideways. So sometimes I just leave it there. I'd love to zoom in, but I, mean, I could maybe do it digitally. I could zoom in on the program here. Hang on. 
it gets a little little blurrier, but you can see a little better. Couple zingies. Or as Bob Ross would call them, sizzlers. <sighs> Look at the way the light just sizzles. <sighs> there, there it is. That needs to be subtle. Intense right here at the edge, and it bleeds over. We just need some more diffraction there because the light will be bright enough. Maybe a little here, it's a little more orange down here. Need some glowy glow around these guys. Now I can hit them again with the proper edge. A little lighter, a little more yellow. There we go, now it's got a great extra shine, shiny shine on the edges of those buildings closest to the light source there. Nice. Could probably continue that a little further. Or on the tops of the levels, maybe. Where are the happy little trees? Um, they're all getting stomped on by the unhappy little orcs. Here's the wall as it disappears around the corner. Okay, great, that's got a nice zing on the edge there. That's what I wanted. That's looking pretty good. All right, it's been two hours. I'm just gonna stand up a little bit and stretch again. <clears throat> I think that was the hardest part.
I'm going to try to get through a lot here so that I can, if I stop right at 6, I've done a lot. And that way if I have to pick up tomorrow, I won't have to do that much either. Again, I won't be able to finish uh, this weekend. I'll have to let it dry and go over again later with a, just some subtle atmosphere-y glazes stuff. Okay, let me do a quick five minute break and get some more water. I'll be right back.
Okay. Now it's time to do some landscape. Move that forward. Yeah, I get the feeling that this actually will be a lot easier. <clears throat> city was pretty brutal. <laughs> and I got a picture, right? Let's do a picture now that the city's done, just so I have it. Listening to the Lord of the Rings soundtrack right now. It's a uh, song called The Houses of Healing, where apparently Liv Tyler actually sings, and it's gorgeous. I, it's one of my favorite songs on the soundtrack. I love this song. The Houses of Healing. It's so, like, dreamy and enchanting. It's like, I feel like I'm in an elven wood right now listening to this song. <laughs> Okay, this is going to be Yeah, that's way too orange. I gotta tone that down a bit. It needs to be a little more green. A little more pink. Okay, I should see now I should back this up. Pardon me. I'm going to zoom this back out so we can see the whole painting. There we go. Now we can see the whole thing. <clears throat> this is pretty dry. I could probably hit some of this. It's a little tiny tacky where it's mostly white. But it's not bad. I um, wonder if I could dare, dare to hit this. That's the smallest one I got. I'm going to try to lighten this up and just soften these colors just a little bit. Yeah, that medium I use dries this up just enough. Helps it dry a little faster so I can go back and do something like this. I 
it's just too garish was the color that I initially picked. If I'm real gentle, I cannot peel the paint away because it's just skinned over. And I want to do that a little more here so I have a, a contrast through which to show the, the Rohirrim. See that purple hasn't dried yet. Purple takes a while to dry. There we go. Now I have a, a contrasting value against which I can show more of the Riders of Rohan. Oaths you have taken to lord and land. Fulfill them all. Ride now for Gondor, for ruin. Whatever he says there. Some great king speech, you know. spheric stuff here with these clouds. Maybe I can push one of those mountains back a little further even. It's a little better. Okay, well, hang on to that in case I want to do that again. all this can lighten this up yeah here can be a little lighter and more yellow uh, two different versions of this color a little too light. It's all right. And we'll get a little more medium in there to thicken this up. A little more purple. Yeah, sort of a combination of the two would be good. Here's this ridge they're assembling on. And that continues on that way. A little more purple as it goes along here. A 
it doesn't need to be that hard of an edge a little softer of an edge and a little lighter too there we go it's better soften that Okay, let's bring this back down. Still a lot of yellow on this brush. Okay, darker, not that dark, shit. Touch of touch of green, yeah. Sort of this dreary brownish purple green over here. This is why I don't name colors because it's pointless. Oh, hit him! Maybe there's a little hill. A little more green there because it's getting a lot of this light. Too much green. I think I'm really pushing the idea of perspective now. We're suspending our rules of perspective to make this part of the painting work. But if I do it right, you won't really notice. Gotta join these purples over here. Come on. in here. This has to all fade. Can't be too specific because we're really cheating the distance here. sort of start. Uh, I guess I can start to sort of indicate where they are. There's going to be many levels, sort of battalions or whatever and concentric circles again. Uh, 
ellipse right there, a little higher. This is basically the dividing line between these battalions of orcs here. It will help show their numbers much greater. Like ripples in a pond or something. a little sharper and then we see it sort of disappear and we'll see another one here So this is why we're really cheating this this perspective. This will only work if this perspective is right. Uh, those are all a little too high. Okay, that is better. Yeah, these fade off into the distance essentially.
can come down a little bit more. So look at that. perfect ellipses because they're orcs <laughs> but they should be close this is why I do my underpainting and let it dry completely so that I can push the paint around on top of it <clears throat> very effective way of manipulating the paint I think I've come to find out over the years, it's what I like. Push this down a little bit more. Yeah. That's looking better. Erica, how's it going? Thanks for watching. Um, there are prints, incidentally, available of this piece you can buy. Um, you should be able to click on the link on whatever streaming service you're watching from. Looks like you're on YouTube. Yeah, you can buy prints of this piece now. Um, before it's even done, and they're 25% off. So check out the link and check out our prints, and you can buy this very one. And uh, just, I guess, follow us if you like what you see and you want to see some more sweet painting videos like this, because I do a lot of these now. <laughs> Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm painting my butt off and it's very exhausting. It's a tremendous mental feat to be able to do this all day long. And it's tiring on my body too. It's a hard job, but I like it. I do it because I like it, of course. Hmm. And I'm getting hungry, but I want to save up for the sushi tonight that's happening. Or like, there's a great sushi place that I like to go support uh, <clears throat> here in Denver. It's called uh, Rocky Yama Sushi. I've, I've come to know the guys there, and they're really nice. I was getting takeout there for a while, for the last couple months, um, since they were only open for takeout. And now I was, I've been able to go there and sit down in the restaurant. It's really nice. Um, so me and my girlfriend, we're going to go there after I'm done with this and after she gets off work. Anyway, <laughs> that's how I'm doing, <laughs> since you asked. And let me look at these circles and make sure they're nice and concentric. Yeah, that look pretty good. Maybe. No, that one's too high. So you gotta fix these before I get in there and do the details. That one's too high. And then so is that one. Better 
are doing concentric circles and in perspective, you just sort of start to notice when they're wrong. Smash those things down a little more. That's better. Yeah, spending extra time on the drawing is just worth every single minute you spend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Aren't you an engineer of some kind, Luke? Doing this kind of stuff freehand is really tough. Concentric circles in perspective are hard enough, let alone when they're battalions of orcs. That's even harder. There's going to be some interruptions in this as the, the sort of formations change. They don't necessarily stay consistent. Different formations and blocks of orcs and stuff. The non-drawing kind. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then you get the math behind what I'm doing. It's tough. Having to do this freehand. That's why I'm adjusting it. It's like it's like clay. It's like this is like a, a two-dimensional sculpture, very much. Decide where the line is thicker and where it's thinner. And that blends into this background y landscape. Yeah, it's looking good. Aerial perspective to contend with as well. 
since things change color and value when they get further away. Okay, that's good. I like that. Because it has to be a flat feel. It can't look like it's raising or anything weird like that. Okay, why don't I do throw a here since there? We'll do a back to front. Typical landscape style. These guys will be especially small. And if technically they were that far away, we wouldn't be able to see them distinguished individually at all. But we will now because it's we're gonna forgive some of this perspective and just uh, go with it. stick I want them to uh, blend into this pretty well yeah this is the part where we're gonna pretend they're not as far away as they are just so we can actually see them in the painting. I can throw up some banners and stuff. show some of them sort of further away because we can see above their heads. Literally, these are totally implied little, little abstracting silhouettes. I'm not drawing any horses or people. That would be not realistic. This is what a lot of these works are going to look like too. Just little implied dots.
Okay, well, I got this color. Let's do some banners. Maybe a little lighter. Which way is the breeze going? <laughs> Shit, I didn't think about that. Uh, it's going this way. Because the smoke is blowing that way. What a stupid question, right? Gotta do it, though. This is where this is getting. All right, I'm gonna shove this thing closer just so I can get here and paint. It's hard to paint in front of this camera. And that wind is just whipping. Wow. Man, that's like gale force out there. Jeez. Hope it doesn't blow over our little plants outside. Seems to be a little darker. Oh, I think we're going to get some lightning. darker even. We gotta be able to distinguish these guys against the background. It's raining. If it hails, I have to run outside and move some plants out of the way that don't get pulverized. So I have to watch the windows. So if, it, if I suddenly jump up and run out, it's because I'm saving some plants from being destroyed by the hail. Yeah, it's definitely lightninging. to come back later and lighten that horizon just a little bit behind these guys. Mm -hmm. 
Oh wow, so there might be tornadoes and or hail today. So maybe that might kill my plans for going to sushi. That kind of sucks. It's pretty rough down here. Yeah, it's pretty windy, but it's supposed to pass after a couple hours. <laughs> Nothing exciting weather related ever happens in San Francisco, really? You know, there's any crazy storms, you're right on the ocean. I mean, you know, exciting isn't a great word for it. It's kind of just obnoxious, really. It means like, oh, I can't do anything tonight. Or, you know, my roof is going to get hail damaged. Or, you know, our plants are going to get destroyed that we've been working on all, all spring. That's really exciting. Tornado safe zone, yeah. Can't say we've ever had a tornado here before that I've seen. I know I've heard of them. But uh, since I've been here almost six years, I have not seen one. Maybe I will today. Who knows? Let's blend these guys in. To hillside Ooh, I just heard some thunder okay there's a hillside full of guys Ooh, yeah, uh, art sale. Check out some uh, Lord of the Rings prints. They're 25% off. So click on that link that Nick just posted. Um, Uh-oh, hail. Um, all right, let me take a break, and let me go check and make sure I don't have to, like, cover some of our our vegetables and plants with stuff. Let me pull this back again. Okay. Let me take a quick break anyway, because it's time. And let me go double check our veggies outside. <laughs> so I'll be right back.
well it wasn't hailing but it looks like it could any second <laughs> beautiful paint drawing yeah sorry about that guys i do live in a house where things happen and i suddenly have to run up and do stuff so <sighs> that was a little longer than i thought but at least i Protected all of our plants as well as I could. Put a bunch of them inside. <clears throat> and covered a bunch of other ones as best I could. Hopefully the storm will pass us over. It's supposed to sort of stop around 4 or 4.30 anyway. Just giving the plant report. <sighs> Let's see, storm. Yeah, it's actually supposed to be gone in about an hour. It's right in the middle of it. Oof. As if I didn't have enough to worry about <laughs> by doing this painting. <sighs> oh, now where was I? It works. <laughs> Let's see here. How do I want to do this without painting every single orc? So it'll take me a year. I don't need to. I need to do the ones that are close. Hi there, Steph from England. Uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, I gotta save the plants from the hail. Okay. Um, instantly, any new viewers, um, you can pre purchase prints of uh, this piece before it's finished. Um, there should be a link on your streaming service there to buy prints. They're 25% off all of our Lord of the Rings pieces. Um, so just check out the website. And they're already marked down right there. Uh, and we have uh, anything else in the site is also um, is also 25% off with uh, the coupon code live stream. So yeah, check out the link. Um, check out our Patreon if you want to support us on Patreon, so we can keep doing these awesome painting videos um, and uh, you know do more traveling art shows, which we're going to start doing again soon. And uh, yeah, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Whew. Here's a 
was going to happen. some dark reddish brownish bluish something for these orcs I can separate them once I've got them all ironed out red, gray. I think I'm going to do something to this. It's going to be more fun paint brush work than it is going to be painting a million orcs. If anybody's seen my Great Hall painting I did, just did recently from Harry Potter, <clears throat> I did a similar technique where instead of painting every student at the table, there's a big pile of really fun brush work and it worked really well. Um, at a distance, it looks like a bunch of kids, a bunch of students sitting at the, the four tables in the Great Hall. You get up close, it's this crazy pile of paint brushwork. It was really fun and it worked really well. That could be a little darker. And a little more red. And look a little thicker more medium. So that's a little more transparent. That's a good color for a band of orcs. I will imply a little bit of their numbers. It's going to be mostly paint. It's going to be a trick. Thickness of the paint, I think, will help too. This is why I did this underpainting the way I did, so that it would help me do this kind of thing. Look at that, it's battalions of orcs. It's such a big old brush too, who'd have thought? Maybe I don't need this big giant brush for this. <laughs> I had a different approach in mind until I actually started doing it. Here, as it gets further away, it's definitely going to smooth out.
see out here it's where it's kind of smooth out and turn into the distant sort of field here. I guess what I need here, a little more of this sort of ground color as we can see through. So we can show the orcs standing there a little better because they need to contrast against this dark I want them to blend into the into the nothing over here. So we don't really see where the army ends. Maybe we do a little bit. Alright. We do a little bit here. lightening this up a little. Uh, let's use a lighter brush, actually, or a smaller brush. Do not need this gigantor here. I do need the paint. And here's where I could maybe imply a little more specifically some forms of running around down there. I had heard that uh, when they were programming the AI for a lot of the the bajillions of orcs on the screen for this for these battles. They were programmed to, you know, sort of be part of this crowd. So they didn't have to they didn't have to individually animate each one. Uh, and some of them actually ran away from the battle. <laughs> I'm like, no, you're not supposed to run away. But that's what some of the AI programmed Urukai were running away from battle and stuff. It's kind of funny. 
Hey look, it's a bunch of orcs. See how easy that was? This is the most soothing thing ever. Uh, why is it soothing to watch someone else paint better than drugs or a what's ASMR? Um, I'm glad it's better than drugs though. Glad you're enjoying it. Thanks for watching. Um, I need to make a whole lot more of this color now. Basically, bluish, greenish, purple, something. I need some more. My medium. <clears throat> to extend this a bit. Yeah, that's that thickness that's really making this work. This is a little too dark. Lighten it up and add a little bit more pink. That's about right. A little more blue and brown. There we go. Scrape off all that so I can use it. How about Crowd of Orcs, number two. Battalion. And I'll show a couple of them like crossing the line a little bit here. So those, they're not in perfect formation because they don't care. I'm sure they don't even want to be there. are a little too perfectly delineated. Um, I can smooth them out. I can get a smaller brush here. Maybe there's a bunch of little individual ones doing something right there. These are details I can add in more later, too. It'll help make it a little more realistic looking. Yeah, the texture of the paint is really going to help this a lot. That's why I'm really trying to scoop it up, put it on there thick. Give the impression of lots of little people. Lots of little orcs everywhere. And I can draw in little towers and little fires and all kinds of stuff to make it add some more details. And then also, how about this? Where's that color again? two formations right there. Maybe there's a break right there. Maybe there's an extra 
break right there also. There's a bunch down the middle, like a line down the middle. Big old pile of paint, like that's what I'm talking about. Like that, I don't know if you can see that. Big old honk of paint. Oh, I almost got it. Come on, camera. Well, you can see it. <laughs> don't always paint that thick. when I do. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I drink those Akis. Alright, see I knew this wasn't going to be, the city was easily the hardest part, I knew that. I couldn't do this. I couldn't just fling it all on there and it would not work the same way. Look at those hordes, those jerks, invading our cool city. These guys are getting especially closer. There's a few stragglers. And I can do some banners and stuff once I place the majority of these guys in there. Look at that. Oh, it's so hard yet so easy. the texture that's really doing this one. Let the texture and the paint do the work. I wonder what the orcs in the back are thinking. That was boring. Man flesh. Where's the man flesh? Oh yes, the 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 audio sort of thing that's very calming, right? A ASMR, um, 
Yeah, like calming, repetitive, soothing sounds um, that, yes, I've heard of it before. Um, some people even said, um, like, Bob Ross was, was sort of especially well known for having that sort of soothing voice and the scratching of the canvas when he would use the palette knife and that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, I get what you're talking about. You think it's soothing to watch? You should come try painting a bajillion orcs. That's especially soothing. All right, I think they need to change color as they're getting sort of further away from us. And the crowd is getting... And also I can I can glaze over this later. This is all going to need to be glazed over later to, to unify this and add some more of this sort of subtlety that it's hard to do now. It's okay. It's part of painting. Very therapeutic. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, I need to update this color a little bit. What? A little more purple. For a second, when I first heard that song, I thought she said, Why did the white girls call? I'm like, I don't know. Oh, gulls. Okay, just kidding. On the horizon, the ships have come to carry you home. In all this to silver glass right on the water I love how they even source the lyrics for this song from the appendices from the books and from the history of Middle Earth. That's brilliant. Okay, good. This gets a little nice and distant. See a little more purple and a little lighter. Can you see on the horizon? Why do the white 
skulls call, not the white girls. <laughs> oh good. They're finally watching. Men flesh. That's right. Yes, orcs are life. <laughs> uh, my neck and shoulders uh, are not killing me. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. Not just today, but you know, in general. Um, so I'm good at it. But yes, it's very tiring. That's why, you know, we say we try to schedule the the, the paintings from. You know, one to six, it's a good five hours. If I can hold on that long, great. If I'm like, okay, I'm exhausted, then, you know, we can call it and I can pick it up tomorrow. That's so why we have potentially three days of painting. There we go. Now they blend right in. I can put some ladders and stuff there. Some of those cool orc towers. Yeah, it's about time you guys showed up. I'm like, where are my Lord of the Rings like mega cosplayer fans? You guys are like the most hardcore ones that I know. Man flesh. What do you smell? Man flesh. They have caught our scent. We had nothing but Maggie bread for three stinking days. Yeah, why can't we have some meat? What about them? They're fresh. They are not for eating. What about their legs? They don't eat those. Oh, they look tasty. <laughs> Such a great scene. Meat is back on the menu, boys. That's right. That's, right. That's such a great line. I don't know. Is that line in the book? It, it's not. It should be. They should rewrite the book to include that line. It's such a great line. A British accent? No, it's it's a an Orcish accent. It was a an Urukish accent. So don't worry. I do a very good Orcish accent. obscure some of this I don't need yes look good all the orcs they doesn't taste very nice precious does they not very nice at all. See, that was a Smeagol accent. That wasn't a British accent. Can put a few stragglers out here. See, the key is to not make this look too perfectly organized okay now I need to do the ones back here which should be a little darker
Is that good? Yeah. Ooh. A million orcs just came out of this hand right now. And Legolas sliding down the mammoth. A Jessica and Alexis orc. Oh, you guys could pose for me. Yeah. <laughs> With Legolas behind you sliding down the mammoth. Worst moment of the whole trilogy. Oof. We're going to go the other way this time. This is why. Oops. This is why I practiced painting with both hands, because then I can give one a break. Whew. I feel like that would be a great slogan for like a barbecue place. Looks like meat's back on our menu, boys. They can have like orc themed. Uh, dishes, you know. You can have like a kid's menu called Just a Mouthful. You have a, a dish, chicken legs, just called, what about the legs? That'd be fun. I have to say, the scariest orc, I think, was the guy who said, What about the legs? We don't eat those. He was just like this creepy... He wasn't trying to do a scary voice, a scary orc growling. He was just like talking in his creepy like voice. I think that was the most effective uh, scary orc for me. I think when they try too hard to do a voice is when they don't come out as, as uh, scary. <laughs> Salted pork. There you go. Salted pork. We find you feasting and, and smoking. You young rascals. My favorite Gimli lines is Did oh, that's a that's an Oscar winner right there. Did Oh I'd never hear the end of it when an elf will go on the ground and a dwarf dare not. What is that gray creepy head in the background? You mean my creepy head? <coughs> oh, in the background. Oh, here. Oh, it's my <laughs> it's gray creepy. I'm like, oh shit, did I accidentally paint a creepy head in the clouds or something? No, I have two of these. 
they're my their study, they're planes of the head. You study so you can light them and you can study the planes of the face. They're a little creepy if you don't know what they are. I guess so, right? <laughs> Gray creep. Can you wear it? No, you can't wear it. You can put it on a tripod though, so you can pose it. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. I have a skull too, but that's upstairs because I've been using it to study from. Okay, let's look at this. <laughs> it's hilarious that you notice the gray creepy head in the background. <laughs> I was just afraid I accidentally painted one in the clouds or something. I'm like, shit, I gotta repaint that now. Maybe it's Voldemort. It's the mark of darkness. The, the dark mark up in the clouds. That would be a good combination, right? I think Alexa just shat herself when I said that. Yes! Did you actually, Alexa, did you actually shat yourself? You did, see? Sorry to make you have to clean that up now, but it's a good idea, right? <laughs> Add the dark mark up in the cloud. That would be awesome. I totally should do it. Is that okay, Rebecca? This is your painting, so you would, you know. Right? Clean up Alexa's pants on R5. That happens. <laughs> you talked to her? Oh, good. I'm sure you did. <laughs> that could be a little more of that. Shit, I ran out of my color. I really don't want to mix it again. Just need to fill in this bit. to avoid that, but no. Still, it's not dark enough, damn it. Okay. Awesome. I think what's going to need to happen, if I want to paint little fires and smoke and stuff, I'm gonna, that's going to need to dry. 
but I can do little other little bits here and there. She's thinking about it. See? Nazgul's flying with Hagrid on the knife. Voldemort and Sartorius mashup. Who is Sartorius? That's my my fake superhero villain that I want to make. But he doesn't actually exist in in any fandom that I know of. Uh, all right, I'm gonna put some of these back. Might not need them. Mist and shadow. Oh, oh shall they? Oh, 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 oh. Billy Boyd got a singing debut in this movie. Couple little shinies that are actual paint and not just not just texture. Your evil alter ego, right? I always said if I was gonna make a supervillain, if I was gonna be a supervillain, his name would be Sartorius. I don't know what he looks like yet though, so it's hard to mash him up with somebody. Shinies here and there. Yeah, this, this is all going to be on little subtle tiny textures everywhere to flesh it out. Matte and flesh. And randomize it. It can't look too uniform. Then here's where I can do this. A little bit of medium, a little bit of this. Here's where I can add. A hundred orc helmets at once. Blink. Little paint flickies making me a sea of orc activities. I can smooth over the ones I don't like. this and that. This is all implied detail. This is the fun part, I think. I discovered this technique years ago. I sort of become my own airbrush.
See, look at that. It's looking like a more detailed and more intricate the whole time. Maybe I could add, yeah, <laughs> I could always add a dark mark as a, uh, a digital version. Wow. The trees are blowing over on Santa Fe Drive. Yikes. Holy crap. We have two giant trees in front of our house. And thankfully, they have not blown over. Uh, there's going to be some fire here and there, which is uh, not going to be that bright. Oh, my Lord of the Rings soundtrack ended. What else should I play? I was playing the Harry Potter soundtrack earlier because I'm reading the books. So I will play those again. We'll start from the beginning. <laughs> so Harry Potter soundtrack while painting Lord of the Rings. It doesn't get much more nerdy than that. Alexa, you really need to read the Harry Potter books in French. They're awesome. I know you said you've studied French a little bit before. They're really good. I can lend you mine if you want. When I'm finished. Je suis presque fini avec le quatrième livre. Harry Potter et la Coupe du Feu. Je viens de témoigner la renaissance de Voldemort. Et maintenant, lui et Harry en sont battre. Little fires. Little orc campfires cooking some marshmallows and some man flesh. Uh, yeah, there are um, Nazgul in the sketch I did, and I will add them into the painting eventually. These fires are where they're like or maybe they're like preparing weapons or something or forging things or they're cooking I don't know but there are little fires everywhere and there's gonna be fire all over the city but I don't want to smush that paint so I'm deciding if I want to do that yet or if I want to wait till it's dry later Marshmallows and man flesh, right? Let's see if I can do this. I definitely need more paint than that. What time is it? It's five o'clock. Oh, my neck is starting to get really tired. If the weather still seems to be holding up nicely, which it has not yet, but if it clears up, then uh, I'll probably maybe stop around 5.45 or so and then uh, determine how much I, I need to, you know, I might need to come back tomorrow for a couple hours and do a little bit. Do some smoke. Yeah, there we go. 
Yeah, see? The wind is blowing this way. A lot of this will be pretty dry by tomorrow because these mediums that I'm using really work well to dry the paint out quickly. So uh, some of the subtle atmospheric things I can do a little bit of tomorrow, actually. Oh, I love the Harry Potter soundtrack so much. I listen to it all the time. Um, you know, I need to do... Those towers go right over the... I didn't build make any orc towers. What's wrong with me? What, indeed... Maybe here's Grand, right in the in the doorway. You really can't tell what it is because it's so small, but you know maybe we we know, in in our hearts we know that there's Grand, Grand, Grand. Some orc towers. Big old piles of shit wood tower things. Orcs don't care. Whatever gets the job done. <clears throat> Maybe there's a couple more. These towers are probably made from the wood of the Fangorn Forest. That's why they're so angry with them later. This forest is old. Very old. Full of anger. And memory. There's a big old cave troll pushing these. Aim for the trolls! Kill the trolls! Bring them down! just a little more. Those are kind of cool to see. Maybe make them a little more orange.
Yeah, doing all kinds of fire and stuff above the city will really add to the the look of desolation. Let's, let me see. I can add some. Take a old. This actually is the Bob Ross palette knife, by the way. It's my favorite palette knife. I use another palette knife to mix paint, but I use this one to apply paint almost exclusively. I just like it. Can add some like spears and things. Be very very thin. Yeah, they got some spears now. <sighs> Great work there. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Uh, please follow us on uh, on whatever streaming service you watch. If you want to watch, you want to see more of them. And I'll I'll shamelessly mention it again. We have our Patreon. If anybody wants to um, subscribe to our gallery on Patreon, so you can support what we're doing, there should be a link on your page there, whatever you're watching underneath the video, for just a buck a month you can support our gallery, but then you start getting cool rewards as you get higher with your... Uh, with your monthly subscription. And of course we have prints of this piece available and all my Lord of the Rings paintings uh, which are 25% off right now. So please check out our website which you should have links there for as well. Um, paint a couple Nazgul. Yeah, I think to do the fire and the smoke in the city, I want to wait till tomorrow. So I can do some more atmospheric cool stuff with the smoke without smudging away all the stuff that I just did. That way it'll still preserve those things. Uh, I should take a picture. I haven't taken a picture of this in a while. Not since I added the ore cord. This is looking pretty great. Wraiths, yeah, I gotta add some Nazgul in here. And they're really tiny. And we'll make them fairly dark so they really stand out. here. Look at that. Yeah, he's very small and subtle. That's okay, that's what he's supposed to be. Make his body a little thicker. And of course there's a black rider on him. Very 
there's one there. Maybe we'll put another one here, sort of further in the distance. Maybe right here. Too light, too dark, I mean. There's another one, and I like there was one kind of, it's a little too dark to put one there. I guess I could still put it there and just make them extra dark. I like the location, like he's about to swoop in on the city. I could just make him really dark. Maybe the, 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 the flying dragon things are, it's a her, we don't know. This could be the Witch King right now, and he's flying down to meet Gandalf. Who gets his ass whooped by the freaking Witch King, and of course he flies away. Oh, I guess, you know, maybe this is him flying away because now he hears Thor hear him caught coming up on that. That's what saves Gandalf's ass. Now, come on, Gandalf, you're a freaking wizard. He doesn't do anything wizardy. He hits people with his stick. He doesn't... Breaks his staff in a million pieces. Just go get a new stick. Because it's just a stick, apparently. It doesn't really actually do anything. Magical. So go to get yourself a new stick. I can make that Nazgul a little darker. If we should start a petition. Gandalf should do more wizardy things. doesn't do enough. There we go. Yeah, you can really see him now. How many ring rights are there at the battle? Can I draw like one little one, like right there? That'd be fun. So there's like four in this particular scene. Why not? Here, like right here. Real subtle and tiny. a tiny little bit of sun. Just a glint. Maybe the Witch King on top is some of his armor is like glinting in the sun or something. A little tiny guy there. <laughs> you don't know much about Lord of the Rings, John. I know there were nine Nazgul altogether. I just didn't know if they were all at this battle. You know, there are the nine. Um, I just didn't know if they're all here right now. I don't need to paint nine of them in the sky. That might be a little distracting.
Yeah, John, you fell asleep during the movies. You rewatch the video to check. Oh, you counted. You can actually see all nine flying around. Okay. One, two, three, four. Um, well, I mean, do you want all nine in the painting? I've got four right now. I figured some of them could be like, you know, right by the city and they'd be so small you wouldn't see them. Because they're, compared to the city, they're not super big. I mean, I can throw them. I can hide them. Here, I'll do this. I got four right now. I'll put one right here. You have to find them later. Yeah, it's a cool scene when Gandalf rides out with his staff and shines a light. I agree. Why doesn't he do more of that kind of stuff? He's kind of a lame wizard sometimes. He's very strategic. That seems to be his gift for strategy. There's one there. There's one right there. <laughs> Maybe here's one right here. Whoa, swooping in for the kill. Here's one right here. One more. Maybe this one's... Where is Gandalf when they have that little encounter? Is he like up here? We're gonna say maybe one like just like landed right here. Maybe he's facing off Gandalf right now. We're gonna embellish the story a little bit. landed. Because I do what I want. Gandalf is right there. Drink. There he is. Now they're facing off. <laughs> He's a little speck. So they're about to blow the horn, and they're about to get that Nazgul and that Witch King off of the town. So yeah, so they're in there. All nine of them. Kind of hard to find him in the city, but, <laughs> but you know, you watched it happen, so. Paint a Denver Broncos logo. Um, yeah. It's a good idea, John. No, I was going to paint a dark mark up in the clouds. We had that discussion earlier. Uh, how's it going there, Matthew? Thanks for watching. Uh, incidentally, you guys should uh, um, follow us on whatever social media or whatever streaming you're watching on right now um, so you can watch more of these cool videos. And then um, you can purchase prints of this piece right now.
um, pre-order them, just look at the link um, right below the, the video there, or right on the, you know, the video, you can go to the website, they're 25% off our, all of our Lord of the Rings pieces. Um, and then we have a Patreon, if you'd like to uh, subscribe uh, and support our gallery on our Patreon, that's linked there as well. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, this looks like it's getting close to being where I can leave it today. I want to do smoke and stuff tomorrow when this has a chance to set overnight. I can do more atmospheric things after it's dried as a touch. Faramir's father. Yeah, it could be, uh, oh yeah, oh, that's a good one. Here we go. It'll be Denethor, son of Ecatharian. Lord and steward of Gondor. Yeah, so he'll be... He's right here, ready? Uh, Flaming fireball falling to his death. That's a good call. <laughs> nice. It's very tiny, you can't see it, but... Um, Rebecca, when you get the piece, you'll see it. And you'll know... So much of this war could have been avoided if he just wasn't such a jerk. Right? If he just... He got seduced by the, the Palandir. That's why... That's why he went nuts and decided to not defend the... the city anymore because he thought all was lost because he got sucked into the thing and... I almost said Voldemort. <laughs> Sauron kept showing him visions of the destruction, and he's like, oh, what's the use? So he let it all go to shit. But this could have all been avoided if, you know. And the, the right people just turn against you. If, if Saruman hadn't turned, if Denethor hadn't turned, we would have whipped Sauron's ass, man. It would have been over so quick. But they just didn't have any faith that it was going to work. Jerks. And now look legions of Mordor. The army is at your doorstep. Where are Gondor's armies? Yeah, you know it's there. So, yeah, a little extra with the Gandalf and the Witch King's there. Denethor's falling off the front there. There's Nazgul, you know, flying around there. This is, this is Grand, beating down the front door. You can't really see it. But again, you know it's there. We'll say that's the fire. We'll put a little fire there. We got Grand beating down the front door. Grand will break it. But he has like a, he's like a canopy over it to like protect it from from foes. Grand, Grand. Is it just me, or is that the the orc general guy? Is that Doctor Claw from Inspector Gadget? Did anybody else get that too? Move into the city. Kill all in your path. I can't do dark, but you know. Next time, Gadget. Next time. It's the same guy. Um, the original, this one sold. I would have to say, uh, you have to talk to the gallery about another original like this. <laughs> um, I think we gave Rebecca a pretty good deal on this one, <laughs> uh, especially because they might be getting more than one. But uh, so yeah, I don't do the pricing, thankfully. 
but yeah, please uh, hit uh, message the gallery, and you know we can talk about doing a, a piece like this. Um, or of course we do have prints available. Oh man. Okay, I think I might leave it here for tonight. I've done a lot. I'm tired, and I need to let it dry before I add some atmospheric stuff tomorrow. And I might just do it for like an hour tomorrow, uh, if it's dry enough. Mainly fire and smoke around the city, a little more smoke around here. Um, maybe still touch up the clouds a little bit. I can add a little bit more light value behind the, the Rohirrim so they can see them a little better. I, I made that a little too dark in the, in the horizon there. So a few things like that I could do tomorrow. So yeah, I think it might be good for today. Besides, the storm looks like it's passing, so I can actually ride my bike to meet my girlfriend because so she has the car. We can get some sushi tonight, since I like to support local restaurants now that they're starting to open at a limited capacity. So, Oh, okay. Well, thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, yeah, please uh, um, click on the link there. You can order a print of this piece right now. All of our Lord of the Rings pieces are 25% off, um, and the whole website in general is 25% off. Um, <laughs> you get to sleep again, right? Um, I know, right? You're going to lose some more sleep waiting for this one. But, uh, uh, yeah, and then, um, yeah, please check out the prints. You can buy a print of this one and all the other. I have seven other Lord of the Rings pieces, which are awesome. This is my eighth. Uh, and then follow us, because the next two weekends, I'm doing two more Lord of the Rings paintings from start to finish online. Um, and uh, we have a Patreon. Please check out our Patreon and subscribe if you want to support our gallery. For as little as a buck a month, you can support us and keep us going. Um, because this stuff is very hard, time-consuming, expensive. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, which will be cool, uh, which means we bring all our prints and originals and stuff, and I'm there signing and painting, and it's great. Um, so, uh I have to say, the more, you know, if, it'd be very convincing for us to come to your town if we have a ton of patrons from that specific city. So, you know, check it out and follow us and subscribe. And we have cool rewards as you have more, more, uh, you know, a higher level subscription. We have discounts on our, our prints and originals. Uh, we have access to all these videos and time lapse videos and my progress photos I take. Um, and you have access to. Uh, originals uh, before anyone else does. You have first rights of refu refusal. Um, so yeah, cool rewards like that. So yeah, definitely please check out our Patreon and subscribe if you want to support the gallery. Um, and then uh, just uh, you can follow me personally on Facebook and Instagram. It's Christopher Clark Art. Um, so uh, yeah, cool. Thanks, Luke, for watching. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll come back tomorrow about 1, 1 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. We're in Denver, so whatever time that is for you. Um, to, to spend another hour or so just to touch up some things on here. Um, and then next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the following after that, I'll be doing the same thing. A painting, Lord of the Rings, start to finish. <clears throat> so, uh, I forgot anything else. Uh, Bull, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, Nordic God piece, that could be pretty fun. Uh, I do lots of random commissions, so yeah, definitely message the gallery. Um, whatever you're watching on Facebook, yeah, send us a message and we'll talk about that. Um, so, uh, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.